There have been problems with the Dune the Sisterhood series at HBO Max. I'm going to be talking about things I've heard from the set itself, so stay tuned for that. Let's get into this. As you know, some months before the production began, I broke the news on YouTube and social media that the Dune the Sisterhood series was going to be filmed in Ireland. So I was always curious to see what they were going to do with the series moving forward. And I was happy that they chose Ireland to be a new home for the Sisterhood of Dune. So I originally saw this headline, Dune the Sisterhood director Johan Renk and star Shirley Henderson exit HBO Max series amid creative overhaul and production hiatus. So Johan Renk, who has directed television episodes such as Chernobyl and The Vikings, has left the show. And he was one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why I was enthusiastic about the show, because he brought a sense of quality to a TV series already in doubt based on the material itself, according to the wide opinion of the public. So if Johan Renk was going to bring a Chernobyl-style, Viking-style production value through his direction, through the look of the episodes, that would have made the series something to take seriously. But his exit means that we're going to start from scratch, and we're back to the drawing board. The article says, search is underway for his replacement as production has been put on hold. And also Shirley Henderson, who had been tapped as one of the leads, is also leaving. So we've lost a Harkonnen sister, Tula Harkonnen, and she will have to be recast. So why did Johan Renk leave the show? HBO Max had no further comment, but according to sources, the showrunner change put pressure on Shapka and her team to make major rewrites on the fly, as the series was beginning production in Budapest. Meanwhile, Renk's auteur approach did not jibe with the streamer's vision for the series, and was a departure from the look of Denis Villeneuve's films, which led to his departure. Deadline says he has since deleted any Dune content from his Instagram account, including his November 22nd post announcing the start of production. It is unclear whether any of the footage he filmed will be used in the series. That would be largely up to the new director when they come on board. Sources close to the production indicate that production has been pushed by seven months to give Shapka and her team time to put their creative stamp by reworking the scripts as well as to find a new director. It's unclear whether Henderson's departure is related to the creative changes, Renk's exit or the new start of production, but we hear the delay is wreaking havoc on actor schedules, creating potential conflicts that may lead to more exits and recastings. Diana Demoljohn, who wrote the pilot, has also stepped down as co-showrunner, which was announced previously, and she was replaced by Alison Shapka, who has become the sole showrunner for the Legendary series. So the show has entered a hiatus. There are some creative changes being made to the production in an effort to create the best series possible and stay true to the source material, says a HBO Max spokesman. Now, what source material is this? This is, of course, the Sisterhood of Dune book, written by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. The general consensus among Dune fans seems to be the following. The majority of people don't really care about this uh, adaptation. People don't care about it staying true to the source material because the source material isn't directly Frank Herbert's work, it's his son's and his co-writer's material. So it'll only be in the spirit of Frank Herbert's work anyway, essentially, using the factions in Frank Herbert's Dune to create a TV show out of it. That's why there was enthusiasm when characters were announced which weren't necessarily part of the Sisterhood of Dune book. We had Sara Sophie Bosnina as Princess Inez, and there is no Inez in the book, although there is a princess I believe, but this character is given a name in the series. Inez is supposed to be an independent young princess dealing with the pressures of her responsibility as heir to the Golden Lion throne. We have Shalom Broom Franklin as Michaela, again created for the series. Michaela is supposed to be a strong-willed Fremen woman who serves the royal family while longing for a home planet she's never known. We have Fauline Cunningham as Sister Jen, again created for the series, who is supposed to be a fierce, unpredictable acolyte in training at the Sisterhood School who rarely reveals her emotional core. Also created for the series is Aoife Hine's character Sister Emmeline, who is supposed to be a zealous acolyte descended from a long line of martyrs who carries fervent religion to her training at the Sisterhood. We have Chloe Lear's character, Lila, who is actually in the Sisterhood of Dune book as a written character. 
and she is supposed to be the youngest acolyte at the sisterhood school with a deep empathy beyond her years. Fun fact is she also appeared in the Foundation series. Jade Anuka who plays Sister Theodosia, a talented and ambitious acolyte at the Sisterhood who harbours a dangerous secret about her past. She's not in the Sisterhood of Dune book. And of course there was Indira Varma who was cast as Empress Natalia, which I was really happy to hear because one of my cast choices was Indira Varma in one of my Dune Sisterhood videos which you can check out. Oh and actress Gizem Kling Erdogan is also cast in the Dune Sisterhood series but I don't know any information about her character because no information was announced. Empress Natalia is described as a formidable royal who united thousands of worlds in her marriage to Emperor Carino. I think the name is created for the show, but I believe the character may be in the book, which would perhaps mean that they would beef up this role. Also cast was Mark Strong as Javico Corino to play the Emperor, and I've heard that he was not a character in the Sisterhood of Dune book, but he appears as a child, so there's some strange things between timelines going on, and it may be that they are moving back and forth in time in the series, time jumps, etc. And we have Josh Houston playing Constantine Carino, the son of the Emperor, and I think he's created for the show as well. Edward Davis was meant to play Harrow Harkonnen, a rising politician from a once great family, and he has a strong desire to elevate his house to its former glory. Glory, again created for the show. He doesn't appear in the Sisterhood of Dune book, as far as I know. We have Chris Mason who is meant to play Kieran Atreides, a swordmaster to a great house, whose ambition to live up to his family name is disrupted when he forms an unexpected connection to a member of the royal family. No guesses there what they're going to do with that, he obviously was meant to fall in love with the Carino princess. Again a character created for the show, that doesn't appear in the book. And finally we have Viking star Travis Fimmel, who was cast in the HBO show, and is described as the lead, the male lead of the show, so we were meant to be following him alongside Emily Watson and Shirley Henderson's characters. Fimmel was meant to play Desmond Hart, a charismatic soldier with an enigmatic past, who seeks to gain the Emperor's trust at the expense of the Sisterhood. So obviously there'd be some kind of betrayal between him and the Bene Gesserit. Desmond Hart is not in the Sisterhood of Dune book. So again, he's a character who is created for the show. Which leads me on to the next phase of this. Travis worked with Johan Renk before on the Vikings. So they have a very good working relationship. And perhaps one of the reasons why he was cast as Desmond Hart is because of that relationship. We already know he's a talented actor. So who will be returning to the show now that there has been a setback, a director's left, they're looking for a replacement? We'll get into why in a minute. I feel that Travis will not be returning to the show because of this production hiatus and probably because one of the reasons why Travis took the role is because he was going to be working with Johan Renk again. Something that when you love the work you do on a previous project you want to work with the director again. So it was a chance for Travis to reunite with a director he loves working with. It seems that several members of the cast who were created purely for the show will not be returning to the production of the show. I think we'll see Indira Varma stay on the show, Mark Strong too perhaps, but everyone else will probably be rewritten. So what information do I know about what's been going on behind the scenes on the Dune the Sisterhood HBO show? Well, I believe the same photographer for the Dune film returned to take production photos for the Dune the Sisterhood series in Ireland. The same set builders for Dune Part 1 and Dune Part 2 are also working on the Dune the Sisterhood series. So from very early on it seems that they wanted to have this kind of synergy between the Dune Part 1 film and the TV show. And I've heard that it was a much better experience working on Dune Part 2 than working on the Dune the Sisterhood series because it was a different crew. So I've heard that the pilot for the Dune the Sisterhood series at HBO Max has already been shot. That means that all the actors involved probably have played their role in this episode, to some degree, more or less. Then after wrapping the pilot, everyone went on a break, which was extended, and then this was announced. Now originally, Denis Villeneuve was meant to direct the pilot of the Dune The Sisterhood series for HBO, but due to scheduling issues, he had to drop out to focus on directing Dune Part 2. Apparently on set there was a huge fight, which may have led to the director leaving and the actress playing one of the Harkonnen sisters leaving too. And apparently they've already found the new director who didn't like the sets, so they're being replaced. 
According to my sources, they built a truthsayer room, which is going to feature prominently in the pilot episode. But the problem now is that this pilot has been filmed, and we may never get to see this pilot episode ever see the light of day. Which is a real shame because it will have Johan Renk's stamp on it, it will have his take on the Dune universe, and it's sad to hear that something like this will never see the light of day. And it reminds me of the pilot episode that never saw the light of day for the Game of Thrones abandoned spin-off series, Blood Moon, which was supposed to star Naomi Watts. What I'm hearing is that the Dune The Sisterhood series has been in total chaos. There's been no oversight on the budget and creative decisions that have been made, and I'm hearing that they're going to scrap everything and start from scratch. Why, you ask? because they want it to look like Dune 2021, Denis Villeneuve's Dune. And the original idea for the prequel series was that its timeline was supposed to converge. So the series itself would lead to Dune Part 1. I'm not sure if this was then scrapped, but it seems like they're going to make this the new focus moving forward. So it seems that HBO is utterly obsessed with the matching of the series to the movie. They must have been absolutely livid when Denis Villeneuve had to drop out, because they want this kind of synchronicity matching between the film and the show. And it's partly understandable because of all the awards it's won, but part of me doesn't understand why a show cannot just be itself. And that was Johan Renk's approach. I really believe he was going to bring something high quality to the table. He was really going to dig deep into character psyches, the Bene Gesserit, how they operate, how they think, and I think he was going to make it a very character-driven show in terms of bringing out the performances from the actors, not unlike Game of Thrones in its earlier stages. Instead, they want to bring someone who is a copycat, who will just mimic Denis Villeneuve's style, perhaps with very little room for creative freedom of their own, which I find very sad. And I really do feel for Johan Renk here because he seemed very enthusiastic about filming for Dune. And it seems that they're just throwing away really good quality here because they don't like his approach as a director. Pretty much any enthusiasm I had for the show was attached to Johan Renk being part of the show. So now that he's gone, I don't really see how they're going to recover from this. They might find a director who is okay, or even who is good, who we like. But it will mean that they won't have any creative freedom on the show. But do I think the Dune the Sisterhood series is cancelled? I don't think it's cancelled. I think HBO really believes in the Dune IP and wants to continue with it. So just a recap of my inside info. It seems that they've already found a new director. They're building new sets. They want it to look like Denis Villeneuve's movie in every way possible. The pilot will probably feature a truthsayer room if it's reshot in that same way as the discarded pilot. So there you have it. That's everything we know about the Dune the Sisterhood series. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It's still going ahead. It seems they found a new director. They're building new sets. They want it to look more like Denis Villeneuve's work. And if you remember when House of the Dragon was announced and being made, people didn't believe in the project. And in the end, it turned out pretty good. But I hope they've really found a new director who will still be able to imprint their skills on the series, make it look and feel original and their own work, and not have too much interference occurring in their creative process. A special thank you to my channel members and Patreons for your continued support. Check out some of my other Dune content or some of my other popular culture videos here.